Well, it's a pleasure to introduce Otoniel da Silva, who will talk about counting double points in a cup of coffee. Thank you very much, Otoniel, for accepting our invitation. You can start when we are ready. Well, thank you very much, uh, Jorge, for this presentation. So first of all, uh, I would like to thank you, the organizers, for the invitation. So thank you, Barbara, Debra, Igor, Jorge, and Edson. So it's an honor to give a talk in Brazilian Similarity Theory webinar. I, I had the opportunity to, to be a, one of the organizers in the past. And now I have another opportunity, but uh, to give another kind of contribution uh, as a speaker. So it's an honor for me to, to give this talk. So thank you very much for the invitation. So uh, I will talk about a work in progress. It's 90% uh, finished, but uh, there are something to, to do, uh, some theorems to, to conclude. So uh, this uh, uh, work in collaboration with uh, Juan José Nuno Balesteros, uh, Bruna Orefsi Okamoto, and João Nivaldo Tamazella. And uh, I would like to uh, start my introduction with the following point. So let's start with something that is very important for a mathematician. So it should be a theorem, it should be a mathematical notion, uh, it should be, uh, I don't know, something related with mathematics. Uh, no, this is a simple mug of coffee. So it's not a, a cup, it's actually a mug. Um, so what is my point? What's, what's my point about coffee? So the first point is, I think that one of the uh, important moments in the Congress, it's the coffee break. So it's a picture, uh, it's the school on Singular theory uh, in São Carlos. It's it's a picture taken in it's a meeting in 2016, and I I am very right here, and here it's some some colleagues, and so I think that in that congress, this is a simple it's a, it's an, an example of of this this idea. So I I, I think that in the congress especially in the moment of the coffee break, we meet new people, we have the opportunity to, to do new collaborations, and we get new ideas to prove theorems. So it's in, in my opinion, it's an important moment, okay? So another interesting thing about coffee is uh, this picture. This is a coffee machine in the Department of Mathematics at Universidade Nacional Autónoma uh, do México, in Mexico. So it's a famous machine in the, in the department. Uh, every mathematician knows this in the department, uh, use these machines. And my point is, uh, next to these coffee machines, they are used to be the following writer on the wall. So I, I'm not sure if the writing is still on the wall, but uh, when I was in Mexico, I read something something about this. So. Uh, the writing is the following one. A mathematician is a machine for turning coffee into theorems. So it's a good uh, thing to, to think, uh, it's a good statement to think uh, about the importance of coffee in mathematics. So just, uh, just an introduction. And uh, what is my point about coffee? coffee? So my point is, what happens when you look inside a coffee mug? So here they have a coffee mug, and I would like to look inside the coffee mug. And an interesting curve appears inside the mug. It's a classical problem. Here have uh, a curve, and when you yeah, when you stay in the, the garden with a cup of, of coffee, and you see inside, and you see a curve, it's it's. Uh, it's similar to it's uh, it's something similar to a singular curve, and it can make some questions. So why does this happen? First, first, why does this happen, and what kind of curve is this? So, as a good mathematician, you can uh, 
uh, studied this problem in actually this is a caustic curve. Uh, roughly speaking, the caustic is the set of more precise in the envelope of light rates, which have been reflected by a curved surface on another surface. So roughly speaking, so here we have a source of light, uh, for instance, the sun, and here you have a straight line of, of light, and here you have exactly a reflection on the curved surface. This is a curved surface, okay? Curved surface. And the reflected light um, goes to another surface, in general, a plane surface. It is the surface of the, the coffee. And the result, this is the result, is something like this, which is exactly the behavior on the coffee mug. Okay. So, uh, there is a mathematical model to study this curve, which is uh, actually a E pi cyclops, very hard to, to say this name, E pi cyclops. So, uh, actually, this is not the, the goal of my talk. I, 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 I not speak about, about this subject, but for the people which have an interest on this subject, I suggest the very nice talk of Pedro Benedini Hill. Uh, it's available in YouTube, it's in Portuguese, but it's not hard to find some material in English about this subject. But following the, the talk of Pedro, in his talks, his talk, Pedro shows that locally, this curve in the mug of, of coffee, uh, locally, this is a cusp. And so we can uh, consider a parameterization of, of, of this cusp given, for instance, by t square and t cube. Okay, so now we have a, a local uh, behavior, a local description of this uh, mathematical object in a, a mug of coffee. And you can return to our uh, office and you can study these curves. And we can put these in a deformation so one classical way to study a curve is study deformation, uh, study a mathematical object. Is that in singular theory is study deformation of this mathematical object. So in this case, uh, I will consider this deformation. Here is t square t cube, and I will deform by minus u plus uh, minus u in the first coordinate function, and I will uh, put a uh, plus u t in the second function coordinate. So naturally, we can make a question, which is what kind of similarities occur for different values of u? So in this example, we have the following behavior. So here's our original curve. This is a cusp for u equals to zero. Uh, for u, uh, of course, this is a real, real deformation. And for u um, greater than zero, here we have a node or locally a Morse singularity. And for u uh, less than zero, you have a smooth curve, so there, there are no singularity here. So, mathematically, uh, with a mathematical uh, study of this curve, we have this behavior. But the, the interesting thing is, when you return to the, uh, the coffee, and you move the mug of coffee in another direction, for instance, this this move it we get another curve it's not my more a singular curve this is a smooth curve and if you move in another direction different for, from this direction this is direction given by one this is two this is three so in another direction in three we have a node or a more singularity and here 
it's the original uh, cost key. It's uh, locally a, a, a cusp. And this is exactly what happened with the theory. So we would be suiting the formation theory while enjoying a mug of coffee. So I, I love coffee. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is just an introduction for the, the theme of, of I would like to, to speak. And the setting, uh, I will start with the setting of, of my talk. Uh, this is about double points. And I will consider a complex irreducible curve X in C2. Now I, I will consider complex uh, uh, curves, not more real. And uh, um, given by a parameterization, which I will call F. F is the parameterization of my curve X. So the problem is the following one. Find the number of double points that appear in the civilization of F. So this is the case. Here's the parameterization of my curve. And this similarity, uh, it's not stable. So we can consider uh, a stabilization of, of this curve. This is something like this. And you can count the number of point, double point, double point, which appears in the stabilization. Here you have two points, a P and a Q, which have the same image, FU of P is equal to FU of Q. So here's another picture. This is exactly what I, I said. And in the complex case, the image of a stabilization is something like this. It's exactly the FU. And this is the original map. And of course, you can, um, you can see this in the wall space. Oh, here you have a deformation. It's something like this, C times C in C2 times C. Now, the image of my deformation, let's put this F, big F, capital F, something like this. And this is the F of C times C, which lives in C2 times C. This is my favorite surface. Okay, let's continue. So, uh, we, we can consider another example, uh, for instance, the example EQ and U4. And here you can consider a civilization FU. And here you can consi consider another civilization. The civilization is not unique. So you can consider a GU, for instance. And in both civilizations, we can count the number of the points, double points. And here in this case is three, three double points. And in these other situations, this is still three. And so a uh, natural question is, the number of, of double points is well defined. So it's possible to show that the number of double points that appears in the civilization of F does not depend on the choice of the particular civilization that you, you consider, okay? So my problem, it's well defined. And the problem um, to remember is find the number of double points DF that appear in the civilization of F. So in the case of curve, it is well known that this number DF it's equal to the delta invariant. So well, the where the delta invariant is defined as the complex emission of this chain. It's O O one. Um, over the pullback of U4, pullback, push hard, push hard. But this is a classical invariant for curves. And here in the civilization, we can uh, make a, a, a remark. Uh, we can see as uh, the number of parameters in a minimal uh, unfolding of the, the map F, okay? So the next case, so the, the case of curve, it's, it's okay, it's, it's already, no, okay, it's well. Uh, 
So the next case is the case of surface in C4 with isolated singularity. So here we have a surface in C4. And I will suppose that it have a parametrization. And so why C4 and not C3? Because if you, if you consider a surface with isolated singularity in C3, this is normal. And there is no parametrization from C2 to this surface. Here I, I, I consider a reducer surface, okay? with the reduced structure. So the next case is actually C4, okay? Isolated singularity surface with isolated singularity with a smooth uh, normalization. So more, more precisely, I will consider a math term from C2, from uh, C2 to C4, which is an immersion outside the origin. This is uh, another way to see this. This is an a finite map. And the general case are map terms from C Cn to C2n, uh, which are um, immersion outside the arch. And the problem is the same, it's the generalization of the problem of curves. Find the number of double points, df, that appears in the subdivision of f. So this number is well, uh, this invariant is well defined. And we already have in the literature the following one following results. Here it's the, the Gaffin's work related the number of double points uh, to two other invariants. Here's the uh, second number of, uh, this is the ideal of the double points, it's a kind of, of, of ideal to define the double points. And here it's the number of cross caps uh, of uh, a genetic projection from Cn to uh, C2n minus one. And here we consider this is the F tilde, F tilde. And another result to calculate the number of double points, it's a formula uh, given by Art Nagata. It's a formula which is uh, the dimension, the complex dimension of this model. It's a, a quotient of ideals. Uh, when we consider here this idea in O C N times C N. Okay, but this is not a direction formula, and this is not a formula like this one over an ideal. So, so the dimension, the complex dimensions uh, over C uh, of uh, uh, Artinian ring. So we would like to, to, do, to calculate double points with something more simple. This is, in some cases, not, not, not easy to calculate. So uh, for this reason, we, uh, one of, of, of goal of this talk is to present a result to calculating double points using the ideal of mode for multiple points. So, uh, let me uh, make a review of the mode ideal. So in this, this is make uh, this the cases in general. So for C n to C p, in general n it's less than p. So if f from C n to C p is a finite holomorphic map with n uh, less or equal than p, then d two f is defined as a set as uh, by the closure in Cn square of the set of pairs of the sync points x1 and x2 such that the image of x1 and x2 are equal. And here you can denote the di diagonals in Cn times Cn and Cp uh, times Cp by delta Cn and delta Cp. And you can consider the ideals which define this uh, these sets and can write uh, these ideals in this form using local coordinates. And we can show that uh, the pullback of this ideal 
uh, it's contained in this idea. And so there exists some functions of uh, uh, ij such that fi minus fi of x prime uh, satisfies these relations. So we can, we can construct a matrix alpha and we can consider the double point space, so uh, an analytic structure for the double point space, as uh, the pullback of the uh, diagonal, the, uh, the ideal IP, plus the minors of this matrix alpha. So it's better explained with an example. And this is the ideal of mode. This is the double point ideal of mode. Okay, this is explaining uh, better with an example. Here we have an example. Uh, it's a map from C2 to C4. And here you have x squared, x cubed minus x times y, x uh, y squared, y cubed plus x times y. So in this example, the matrix alpha is this one. So to construct the ideal V2 of F, we can consider the minus minus of alpha and the equations given by x2 minus x2 prime, uh, x cubed minus x prime, oh, sorry. and the other ones okay so the first result is we can calculate the double point the number of double points that appears in the stabilization of my my map term uh, as the condemnation of this ideal the mode ideal and uh, i will uh, give a, a short idea of the proof so the first remark it's is n uh, comma 2n is on the set of nice and dimensions of matter. So we can consider civilization, so that civilization in fact exists. And we can note that uh, if f is a civilization, so f is a finite map term from cn to c2n minus 1, where uh, capital N is equal to n plus 1. Okay. And there is a result from uh, George Perez and Nuno Ballesteros published in Manuscrita Mathematica, Mathematica uh, which says that the, the space 2, D2F is one dimensional and it is Koimakoli. So here's an idea uh, we have here. I'm oh, sorry. We have here CM. Here we have our map. Here our image. And now you take the stabilization. Here is the double point. Here's if FU. And here's something like this. So the double points appears here. And you can see something like this. So the idea is you can consider a projection of this space on the parameter space C, and this projection will be flat. So the degree of these projections is equal to the number of pre-image of a generic value here. But the number of genetic values here, uh, the number of, of pre-images of this point, T0 here, U0, it's the number, it's two times the number of double points of F. So this is explained by this equation, this expression. So D, D2F is quite calling. So the restriction, uh, it's flat. And so the degree of uh, uh, a projection uh, P from CN to C, where C is the, the parameter space, 
it's equal to the degree of this projection is equal to two times the f. Okay, let's continue. By a classical result in commutative algebra, we have another thing that this degree it's equal uh, multiplicity of the pullback of the maximal ideal in the ring of the double point of f. And so we can show that this is a, a primary ideal and we can show that this is a parameter ideal. So we can calculate this multiplicity as a, a co-dimension or more precisely a length, a length of a local ring, which is the following one, this. But this ring is isomorphic to this ring. And this ring is exactly the ring of uh, defined by Mohn's idea. And so the results follow from the inspection, uh, sorry, from the inspection two, this inspection, and three, this inspection. Okay, now an example to, to give a, a uh, illustration of, of this. So here, the same example, the, mat the matrix alpha is the following one. And here you can calculate the, the ideal, the most ideal in two of F and can use it singular or by hand and can calculate that two times DF is equal to 12 in this example. So this example, when you consider a civilization of this map term, we will find at 12 double points, or more precisely, C double points, six double points in the target, and 12 in the source. So the next result that I would like to comment to, to speak in this talk, it's the homogeneous case. So in the homogeneous case, we can uh, present a formula to calculate uh, the number of double points in terms of the degrees and the weights of, of my map term. So here I have a map, map term from C2 to C4. Uh, I will suppose that the weight of X is uh, omega one and here uh, double one and here the weight of Y is double two and the degrees of the maps here you can, can think that F is the following form, F2, F3, and F4, and here have degree D2, D3, and D4. These are the degrees of the coordinated functions. So with this, uh, and I will suppose that is an immersion outside the origin, which is equivalent to A finite, finite. So the F is can be calculated with this formula. So this formula is already known by the, in the current one case. In this case, it's, it's very easy to, to find a, a proof, but here we do not have any hypothesis on the current of F. So it's, it, it's work in any current. So the formula is, the idea of the proof, again, very quickly, uh, we, we can consider a model of, of a map chair from C2 to C4, and I will construct a generic matrix uh, four times two, something like this. And here I will put A1, 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 A2, A4, one, A4, two. This is the matrix A. And I will, I will consider a new ring with 10 uh, uh, variables, which are defined by X and Y, the same variables uh, in C2. But I will uh, consider new eight variables, which, which are these variables, which appears in the generic matrix uh, four times two. So, I can define a new ideal I in this ambient, in this ring, defined by the minors of this matrix and these relations. 
And the, the idea here is that I can consider a map term from C4 to C10 uh, when the C4 is thinking uh, to be this C4. And I, I can see that I can define this map uh, in a convenient form such so that the pullback of the ideal I is exactly the most ideal. So this is the, the main idea. Uh, with this idea, uh, we can prove that the codimension of the, the zero set of I in C10 it's equal to the codimension of the modes, the zero sets of the modes ideal in C4, which is four. And we can check that this variety is coin Macaulay. So yeah, the ring associated with this variety is a coin Macaulay ring. So we can uh, find a minimal resolution of this ring. A minimal resolution is given by this. And by a classical result, uh, if this is coin Macaulay and the condemnation is the same, we can uh, make the pullback of this resolution by this map, this map phi. And this gives a minimal resolution for this ring. And this ring is exactly the ring uh, defined uh, the ring used in our proof of Mons ideal. Uh, this, this is the ring, and we know that the dimension over C of these Artinian rings, so the length of the this ring, it's equal to uh, the number of double points divided by two, of course. So the idea here is uh, use this uh, minimal resolution to compute this, uh, this dimension. So in this case, we use that F is quasi-homogeneous and we can find uh, this dimension, replacing this expression, this minimal resolution in five by another sequence of graded rings. Say so I can consider a graded ring R in four variables, X, Y, and X prime and Y prime, and can can give a appropriate a convenient uh, degrees for the variables, which is double one for the variables x and x prime, and the degree of y and y prime equals to double two. So in this case, we get another minimal resolution. Uh, it, it's the same, but now it's it's a graded graded resolution. And the, the shift in each of these uh, rings are expressed by this, this exponent. And these exponents, KJI, uh, are defined by these uh, relations, which is uh, expressed in terms of the degrees and weights of my map jar. So, Finish, to finish the proof, we consider the Poincaré series of uh, a graded R model, which is defined as the, the sum of the dimensions of each uh, homogeneous part. Okay, and we can uh, we can consider the the, the Poincaré series of each member in my each term in my minimal resolution, and we can take the limit of of the Poincaré when t goes to one. But the problem is that this limit is something like uh, here is the limit when t goes to one, and here is the limit when t goes to one, and here we have zero over zero. So we can uh, apply L'Hopital rule, and we need to do this two times. And finally, we find the limit when t goes to one, which is exactly this expression.
And this inspection is exactly the dimension of the first ring in the resolution. This, this one. And the proof is concluded. So the same technique can be used to find a formula in the case n equals to three, which is given by the following formula. So we start here and you continue here. So it's not beautiful to show this formula, but uh, we we work on these formulas uh, in the case in the case of, of n equals to n equals two, and the formula given by n equals three, and uh, we found a closed formula which can be written using one line. So I I can write I can write the formula for n case and for n a greater than or equal than two in a one line. So we're expecting right here. But uh, the proof is not concluded, so uh, there is a gap on, on our proof. So this is still a work in progress. Maybe in another opportunity, I I will show this formula. Okay, but it's possible to find a closed formula. Uh, to each dimension, okay? Uh, right, so the next, uh, the next talk of in my, my talk, uh, it's the following one. It's possible to define a delta, a delta invariant for a map germ F from Cn to C to N, which is the hypothesis here, it's a mention outside the arch. So in this case, we have an isolated singularity. So this quotient, uh, this dimension is finite because this is an isolated singularity. And so this number makes sense. And the question is, in the in analogy with the, the case of curves, we have the following uh, characterization of the F. And so the question is, it is true if n is greater than or equal than two, so it is true that df, the number of double points, it's equal to the delta of f. Here, uh, I am consider this variate x with the reduced structure, okay? And the answer, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not, uh, it's not true. So the point here, it's uh, an example given in, the, in a very nice paper of Cidinha e Elenice. And in this paper, we have a map, a monorail map from C2 to C4, map chair. And in this, in this map, the number of double points, it's three, and the delta invariant, it's four. So in general, this is uh, greater than a greater or equal than the number of double points, okay? But this is still needs uh, a proof, okay? So this relation greater than or equal, okay? And we have a proposition, we have a formula to complete this this relation, to give an answer to this relation. And the formula is the following one. So consider a map chain from Cn to C to N, which is an immersion outside their origin. So it's possible to give a convenient analytic structure. So here it's not the reduced structure. We have here my surface. So the structure here is the parameterization, Cn, it lives in C to N. And the structure is the following one. I will consider a uh, stabilization. So the stabilization is something uh, big. It's a big surface. And this is uh, a surface. It's a image of Cn times C. So this surface, I will consider the reduced structure and I will consider the reduction, uh, uh, the structure of X 
as uh, if this is phi of an ideal i, the, the instruction of x0 is v of i cutted by t equals to 0. So when you cut by t equals to 0, we return to the special fiber. And I will consider this structure for x0. So you can define the same delta variant. This is the delta variant with x red reduced. And the formula says that the delta invariant is equal to the number of double points plus something. This something is the epsilon invariant defined by Royal. And this is defined in this situation by, uh, I will call this J. This is the invariant J. And the calculation of, the calculation of this invariant is the following. The dimension, complex dimension of this vector space here. Okay, so to finish, um, very quickly in five or ten minutes, uh, Jorge, how many minutes do you have? How many? How many? We have more nine minutes. Nine minutes. Nine minutes. Yeah. It's enough. It's enough. Okay. 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 So in this part, I will consider uh, results or some uh, results of this uh, theory uh, about double points, uh, the number of double points in a, a map term. And here, uh, I I have an interest in deformations, not stabilization, but uh, Whitney deformations. So I will consider A deformation of my of my map term. So I will consider map term F from C N to C C to N. Here it's F is X, which leaves in C N. Now I will consider a deformation of this F F U uh, F T. T, T. Okay. And here's the deformation. And here I have a total space. Total space, which is the image. F is from Cn times C from C to N times C. And X is the image of this. Oh, sorry. Cn times C. And I would like to study Whitney X singularity of this family. So with singularities, uh, roughly speaking, it's something about uh, the behavior of the Whitney conditions or the behavior of, of tangent cones here. So if these families uh, have a, an appropriated uh, behavior, a good behavior, with relation the condition B of Whitney, uh, oh, we we say that this family is Whitney singular. There's some something technical. I will skip the, the the definition and I will present the result. So the result is uh, my family. I will consider map chair C n from C to n uh, immersion outside the origin or a finitely, and I will consider an unfolding. So this is the unfolding. So the, the following three statements are equivalent. So F is a weakening singular. The number of double points and all polar multiplicities of even index, so M0, M2, M4, M6, or all possible even in the index are constant. And this is also equivalent to the another statement, the number of the uh, double points uh, of FT, it's constant, and all polar multiplicities of old index M1, M3, M5. So, all old uh, possible index are constant. So, the, the idea, the main idea to prove this theorem 
uh, it's proved the following proposition. Here, we have a characterization of uh, the polar multiplicities using uh, some space, which actually are ices. And to prove this, these formulas, uh, we can use Legroyer's formula. It's a direct application of Legroyer formula. And you have a, and the consequence of these expressions here is that we can prove an alternated sum of polar multiplicities. So if you sum all the polar multiplicities in an alternating form, the result is one. But each of these invariant is upper same continuous. So we can use only the 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 multiplicities of uh, every index or the multiplicity of uh, all the index. So this is the idea of the proof. And uh, corollary, the, the last result, the last comment, uh, it's with this proposition, we can uh, calculate the Euler obstruction. It's not, not something uh, very hard to prove, but we can calculate the Euler obstruction of the image of a map term from CN to CP, where P is equal to 2 when, it's not our case, but it's true also for the dimension P equals to 2 n minus 1, and the dimension 3 and 4. So the idea here is have a surface here, not necessarily with isolated singularity. I will draw with isolated singularity. This surface leaves in C CP. So we can cut this surface with a hyperplane, H, with his, this hyperplane, and you can get a curve. Not a curve, but a, an object which lives in this hypersurface. So we can consider the pullback of this, this intersection. This is H intersection with F of Cn, and here is actually a surface or an object with isolated singularity. But this is also an analysis. Uh, more precisely, this is a hypersurface in Cn. And no, this is an analysis. Uh, just in some cases, this is, this is a hypersurface. And so we can consider the Muno number, the Muno number of this surface. And if you uh, consider this formula with the Muno number here, we can cal calculate the Euler obstruction of the image, this surface, this. Okay, so uh, I think this is all. So thank you for the, the uh, for the audience.